Welcome to Access Church. We're stoked you're with us. Before we get into the teaching today, grab your Bible, your note sheet, and maybe your favorite beverage, and be ready to receive all that God has for you today. Sound of a symphony to my ears 
day It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change and I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change and I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day It's the only thing for us. So we're all moving pretty good. Joints are doing pretty good. Glad that you're here. We have some special guests that have come halfway across the world just for you. Not just for you, but uh, we're going to get to know them uh, today. So it's going to be a really fun day as we've been focusing this year on uh, missions, outreach, being generous with our time, our money, and things like that. And so uh, we're going to continue that journey uh, today. Uh, before we get into kind of groups get the brain warmed up, dialogue a little bit uh, before we hear from uh, Ray and Carol. A uh, few things I want to remind you of. Connection groups start back up this week. So those are our home groups. If you're not in one, you can go online uh, and you can uh, join one. Uh, those are eight weeks. And so those will start this week, Wednesday and Thursday nights, just so you know. So uh, you will get an email if you're in a group. If you don't get an email, that means I don't have you in the group. So you need to contact me, but uh, you'll get an email tonight about giving you the specifics of what's going on. So excited to get us back together. Also, this is going to be a fun month as far as we're heading down to Tijuana Christian Missions uh, down in Tijuana. So we're going to be heading to Mexico and we're hanging out with the teenagers at the orphanage there and we're going to be teaching them self-defense and some minor jujitsu. So I'll be leading that. You don't have to know martial arts to go. So we need people to help cook for them just hang out. They love it when people come and just talk to them, hang out. We're going to participate in that. I might need a few helpers to kind of help move people around and things like that. But um, So we're looking at about six to eight people that can go. So once that kind of fills up, we're going to be done. So you can go online, sign up for that. But I want to go down there, love on them. Uh, and so that's an all-day Saturday thing. Again, go online, check out the date. Uh, I think it's the 19th, but it's going to be an all-day thing. So really fun time, and you're going to be blessed too. It's just an amazing group down there. All the way from, is it the south of France? West, Mid, east, north, middle? North, Northern California. <laughs> Northern California is where they're going to be landed, but all the way from France with many years overseas, missions, missing out on a lot of things, but uh, serving our Lord in amazing ways that we're going to get to learn from as we get to know them today. Let's welcome Ray and Carol Simon. Thank you very much for being here. They are, uh, I don't know if you want to call it on tour, but they're visiting um, all different kinds of uh, churches to encourage, uh, to inform, to help as far as just uh, with people as far as a pathway when it comes to, we're affiliated with a denomination. A denomination is basically kind of helps organize churches, oversee, give structure, give guidance. Um, we're part, partnered with the Alliance which is a very small denomination, but I love it because for over 100 years now, they're focused on actually planting more churches outside the United States than inside because there's people groups. Everybody needs to know Jesus, but there's people groups that don't even have the chance to hear about Jesus. And I've shared stories about that before where it's amazing to talk to people and they're like, 
So tell me about this Jesus. I have zero idea what you're talking about. And it's really, really cool how God works in those. And so that's what we're part of. And they have been missionaries for the Alliance for how many years did you serve for? You, you guys threw down. We went to language study in France in 1983. And then we went to Africa, Ivory Coast, West Africa. And then in 2000, we transitioned to France. And mm. that's, we just left there in May of 2021. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of time. So, um, yeah, so tell us, I, I'm kind of curious as we get to know each other. I know it's, um, you know, and if you want to spend more time, uh, they're here uh, this week, both of them. And then I know, Carol, you got to take off. And so um, it's one of those things I encourage you. Uh, they're around as far as if you want to grab lunch or you want to, you know, take care of them, you know, show them around somewhere or just get to know them. But we have the ability really to learn from people on the front lines with a lot of experience. So this is a privilege I consider for our church. And so I just encourage you to talk to them after church. Uh, we're going to be grabbing lunch, heading over to our house to watch a little football. We'll talk a little bit about Jesus, watch football. We'll do both. Um, so if that's possible, um, see how boring the game is now. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, so again, if you want to hang out more, just just let me know and um, you can hang out at the house and, and get to know them more. But uh, how did you even, I'm always blown away. Like if I'm honest, like you give up a lot when you leave. I mean, you're just, you're, you're home, your family, you guys have grandkids. Um, where did this begin as far as just this, this sense of, uh, Hey, I think, I think this is what God has called me to. Um, how did that happen? It might have been different for both of you guys, but how did you even get called to this lifelong cross-cultural overseas missions? That's a good question. Uh, I grew up as a preacher's kid in an Alliance church. And since my dad was the pastor, we were the family that often had the missionaries come to our house and stay in our house and got to know a lot of missionaries. Uh, one summer when I was at church camp, uh, anybody ever go to church camp? Oh, yeah, we still, got, we still got that. You we know? still got it. Still it's got a, it. It's a great place to meet Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And so I had a, a real encounter with Jesus that summer. In the last day of church camp, they always had this big missionary thing in, in the afternoon. And at the end of the missionary thing, the, the missionary said, anybody who feels that God is calling you into missions, come up front. And, and I couldn't sit in my seat. Yeah. And that was my call to missions. Um, it was between my seventh and eighth grade year in, in Whoa, middle early. school. Yeah. And I knew that that's where I was going. I didn't always stay on that track, <laughs> you know, but, but I knew that that's what it was way out there. So that that's, was my call on my life. It, and, and by the way, with that, Ray, I love that as far as um, we can't discount how God moves in our children at a very young age and all the way through middle school and high school. And with that, like you said, Sometimes our kids get that vision, and then as parents, we don't feel like we're seeing the vision every day. It's like, you made that commitment at camp, and now you won't clean your room, and we're arguing. It's like, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> like, you know, it's one of those things of uh, sometimes God plants a seed, and then as parents, you're supposed to help water it exactly. and not, not douse it, right? And so help, help get it going, help kind of the flames keep going. But that calling doesn't mean that it's going to be immediately your eighth grade year, you're moving to, you know, uh, overseas. And so, but, but God works. Don't discount um, in young people, and we need to be aware of that and help kind of fan that flame. So that's a great story. What about for you, Carol? Well, my, my calling, if you want to call it that, uh, wasn't quite as direct. I grew up in a Christian home. My parents farmed in, up in uh, Midwest Canada, and um, they were very involved in the church, and... We often had missionaries that we, we prayed for missionaries. I still remember the names of the missionaries we prayed for. Yeah. We had uh, pastoral couples that came for a couple of years on their way to the mission field mm. just to get some experience. And, um, and then when I graduated from high school, I decided I needed like a year of Bible, Bible school just to get grounded in my faith. And so I was going to go for one year. And at the end of my first year, I met him. <laughs> and the calling became clear. <laughs> well, I knew where he was headed. I, I, you know, I, was, I knew that I wasn't called to go single overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, it took a while. I don't, I have to take time to process things. Mm. And I looked back and I reflected on how the Lord had prepared me. And, um, and I said, yes. So I said yes to him, and I said yes to God. 
Nice. Have I was willing time. to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. So that one year turned. You, you stayed. Uh, yeah. I, then I stayed and I got uh, a bachelor of biblical studies. Yeah. Awesome. Right on. So from there, you guys met then uh, in college, uh, and the relationship and the calling, boom, became one. Yeah. Um, and so, what was that journey like as far as uh, that first step? You guys had to go to language school right before. Oh yeah, there was more than that. There was a, a period of time at the at the time we called it home service, and that was like four years. Well, we were we our first year of marriage we weren't in ministry, and then four years of ministry, mm. and then back to seminary, and I went to work so he could go to seminary for a year, mm -hmm. and then we went to language study. Mm in France for a year, and then Africa for 16 years. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted you guys to hear is some of us feel the calling, but there's a lot of work with the calling. God doesn't just call you, and then it just happens like that. And I just want you to know, like, I, I told you, because we, what, we planted our church about five, I don't know, I, I lose time, five years ago or so. But um, I would love for our church to have a homegrown person or couple that we get to support. I, I, I'd be thrilled with that. Um, and so far, we haven't had that yet. It's not like a guilt thing or like that. But, but if any of you have that calling, um, just so you know, is there's a lot of work that goes involved. You got to get some training. If you're going to do missions, make sure you know the Bible and who Jesus is. Make sure your walk with God's authentic. It takes a lot of work as far as, I've heard this a lot with missionaries. One person had to work while the other one did something and then they had to switch off. Like there's work in that to get there. Um, Carol mentioned that we did a year of language study. Actually, when you're learning a language, you never stop learning a language. Mm -hmm. And we, in, in the Alliance, we consider the learning of language where you're going to go to meet, to, to speak to those people about Jesus, very, very important. Um, if you want to talk to somebody about their heart and their heart issues, you got to talk to them in their heart language. Yeah. And we tell people coming into France, You've got this, this year, we're paying you to learn French. And they're like, whoa, 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 nobody's ever paid me to learn language before. <laughs> but it's really cool because they just get in and that's what they do. That's what their whole thing is all about. And we ask them to do language study for two full years so that they can get the language to talk to people about Jesus. Because if, if you come and you're just going to speak your language, Doesn't work. you're going to need the Holy Spirit to do a lot more translating than is necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Within that journey, and we'll talk some more about the specifics, you know, North Africa to France, things like that. But um, what, what appealed you to the Alliance? I, I think for some of us, maybe some things are, uh, it could be, first of all, it's just scary. Maybe we could address that. I don't know for you guys, but to, I mean, even planning this church, we were at the church before that you guys know called Crosspoint, large church, very comfortable. That's scary to jump out of that. It's scary to take your kids out of something. It's scary financially. Like you have all these fears um, and so I don't know if you guys had a lot of that, but I sense that I, I know in my life and I've talked to you, you know, you guys, I think we, we sense that to really trust God in ways where even just being apart from family, I know for some of us, we're like, we're going to say no to that calling because no, I want to be next to my parents or I want to see my kids or grandkids. Um, what was that like? Just that, that journey as far as, um, God takes away those fears or it's like, no, those are real. And you always have them. Like, how do you deal with that when it comes to that type of, uh, Okay, Jesus, I'm going to follow you in this calling. So for me, I, I knew that that's where I was going and what I was going to do, so that I didn't really have any fears about it. Uh, I grew up in the Alliance. I knew that that's what it was all about. I knew everything that was asked of me. Uh, at one point when we were in Africa, Carol got sick, and she had to go back to Canada for about four months uh, because of her illness. And it was during that time that I had to face my fear, hmm. and that was not being in Africa the rest of my life. And God and I had to have some conversations about that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I came to the point where if, if God, if she couldn't come back, if she couldn't be overseas, I got to the point where I said, okay, I can go back to North America. That's not my desire, but I can go back there. Interesting, yeah. And it's interesting how we're going to have in the midst of our faith these serious conversations with God saying, you got to work on me because we're going to have those periods of time and God really changes us and things like that. What about for you as far as just those, those fears that we all have as human beings when it comes to that type of a 
commitment. I just wanted to add something to our, you know, our, we took the traditional track for missions, but there are other options now today, especially, you know, where you don't need to get as much education uh, and where you don't need to go for the rest of your life. Depends, you know, what God's calling you to do. So um, the Alliance has other tracks, like Envision is another arm of the Alliance missions, and they, they uh, facilitate short-term missions for the most part. Um, as far as fears, I, I would have to tell you that if you decide to, to uh, do something the Lord's really calling you to do, expect to have some opposition mm, from the point. enemy. Yep. From, because he doesn't want us to succeed. And we've, we've seen that on more than one occasion. Um, and it was hard. It was hard. You know, we're not always there when our, when our say, when our parents pass away. We're, we're far, far away. Yeah. I think the hardest part was when our kids started graduating. Well, we sent our kids to boarding school, too. But when they graduated from high school and then we left them in the States, and we were gone, Yeah, you know, and uh, for our first child, he didn't even have a computer or cell phone. So it was like kind of coming, you, you know, it wasn't quite, it was expensive. Yeah. And it wasn't quite yet common to have a cell phone, everybody. So a lot of times we didn't know where he was or what he was doing. And that was, that was the hardest, I think, was just dealing with that and just depending on the Lord to take care of, of your family. Yeah. Yeah, it really is those fears. You have to completely rely on God because uh, you're you're not in control. Uh, you brought up a good point as far as, you know, when it comes to missions, there's lots of different layers that I think can adjust to our fears because mm -hmm. some of us, God will change those fears and all of a sudden we're like, no, I, I was at the beginning. Now, as I move forward, God just... Um, and so the Alliance has all these short-term options, uh, longer-term options. You can kind of slowly get into it. And then the training is a lot more streamlined than back in the day as far as just... Um, getting prepared uh, for what God, you know, might might have you want to do. So, um, if, you, if you want to go uh, as a career missionary, then the training is pretty much the same. You still, you know, there are other missions who aren't quite as uh, don't require quite quite as yeah. much as the Alliance. What I like about the Alliance though is they they fully train you. They put yes. you on a track, yeah. so you're not just like wondering. They fully put you on a track, so financially getting you in the right place, getting the right education, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's one of the things we like about the Alliance. They put you on a path rather than being like, we support you, good luck, figure it out. And you're just kind of like going, you know? Um, and so in this, when you look at, you know, just all that you guys have done, um, I, I kind of want to focus on uh, France a little bit uh, because we have this perception of, especially Western Europe, you know, or it's kind of like, oh, yeah, they've all been Christianized and all kind of stuff. And they've gone through some things where the ground, from what I heard, is very hard, you know, in Europe. Um, your time in France, uh, what are some things that stand out to you guys as far as now that, um, that that's kind of complete? And it's for someone else now to kind of continue. What were some of the, the memories that you hold on to as far as just where God did phenomenal things that blew you away? What were other challenges as far as, like, here's the reality of being a missionary, like, Here's what some of the difficulties. What were some of the highlights in France? Some things that you guys did, and then what were some things like? Hey, this is just a—it's a challenge. You're right about about the perception that we have that Europe is Christianized because we have all these big, beautiful churches all over the place. Uh, we were talking about Notre Dame just a little bit ago, and in every city that you go into in France, you'll find a big, big church. The problem is those churches don't have anybody in them. Yeah. More than half the people in France now say that they're either agnostic or atheist. Um, maybe in our area, we have less than two people in a in a hundred who consider themselves Christian. That's not very many. Yeah. Very low. And so that, that's kind of why we're there, because there are so few people who don't know Jesus. When we moved into our first place, the people across the street from us, we were out in the countryside, and we noticed that next to their barn, they had this great big steel boat, like a yacht. And this guy was going to refurbish this yacht and take it uh, 250 miles to the ocean. 
and then go around the world with his family. So we were ta- uh, his son came out, and we were, we were talking in the street, and I said, so your dad's building this boat? And he said, yeah. I said, so he's kind of like Noah. And the kid said to me, who's Noah? <laughs> and that was a shock. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I knew the perception, but I didn't understand right. completely how much people didn't understand uh, biblical personages. Which even in our culture, I know some of you might be like, well, that's where America's at. It's vastly different because even if you're not going to church considered a Christian, if you said Noah, they would have some concept. Like just the concept alone is zero there. Um, and that's what yeah. you're, that's what you're yeah. working with. Yeah. And when we, when we talk at Christmas time about Jesus in the manger, uh, the French have, have this concept of, yeah, you've, you've got the little creche scene, you know, the manger scene, but that's just a fairy tale. Mm. Just like any other fairy tale you tell your kids. So that... that we're working in a culture with people who do not know Jesus. People who are in, a, if they go to church, they're in a relationship with the church, not in a relationship with the person of Jesus. Yeah. And that's really huge. So that's, that's what we try to, where we try to go with people is we talk about people. We talk to people about being in relationship with Jesus, not with, with an organization. And um, we did a baptism one time and this young lady got baptized and, and as she as she gave her testimony of where she cried because she understood the, the depth of what God had done in her life. And afterwards, her uncle came, and I think it was her uncle or her father-in-law, some, some relation came up to me, and he said, now I understand. You guys talk about a relationship with Jesus, not the church. Yeah. And that's what's been exciting for us to see is uh, some people who have grasped, grasped that and walked into that relationship with Jesus. Maybe you want to tell about Annie or Annie? She's like, I got my own story, don't worry. <laughs> that was probably her story. No. Um, I just wanted to say that the area where we uh, served the last 15 years or so, uh, um, Midwestern part of France, uh, is, a, is a very dark, Place. When we first moved there, I could feel the darkness. Mm-hmm. It was palpable. And um, uh, actually, statistics in that area are show that there are less than 1% who are true believers, One per- less than 1% of the population. So uh, it's, it's kind of an area that's got a lot of superstition. There are layers of beliefs. Mm-hmm. Where uh, there's a, you've heard of the Druids, so there's a lot of the Druidic uh, wow. practices. Still, huh? Oh yes, yes, and uh, a lot of superstition, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, the traditional church has l- allowed this syncretism, which is the layering mm-hmm. of beliefs, yeah. to happen, and so it's just all mixed up. Uh, people are are people will go to to healers, traditional healers, uh, and they're not related to, you know, they don't have the gift of healing from God. They right. comes from somewhere else. It's often passed down from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. So these are the kinds of things that we uh, were up against, and uh, it was very evident that, that we were up against spiritual forces that didn't want us to succeed. Mm-hmm. It's a very difficult place. We went in. There was no church. We so you went somewhere where that was just blank slate. Nothing. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, and that was the first year was really hard. You didn't know anyone. No. Parachuted in. Here we come. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, wow. we, we met a young couple who were willing to <clears throat> to to uh, go in with us. Well, they were there already, and lay people um, about the age of our oldest son, uh-huh. and um, and so they they. Um, associated themselves with us to start a church and so we had to you know build it from scratch, from scratch. more or less and so it's the lord who who did it that is because that's miraculous like you gotta you're in that culture it's like um i mean you have i know you have so many memories mm-hmm. but what are just things that you guys kind of look back on as just that warms your heart as far as like wow mm-hmm. that was just such a god that you know because you need that if you're going to do missions it's not all on you what are some things that just really warm your heart as, as you just kind of now think about your journey with God in that environment? Well, I guess uh, 
I'll just briefly say that there were two women who I taught English in a in a secular kind of a an organization that was actually formed to welcome people to the city that were new to the city. Which is a perfect job for Yeah, for yeah. Missions. But it, it ended up being more like a retired person's uh, mm. club. But anyway, I taught English there and um, and met people and you listened to all kinds of stories and um, got to know some people. Invited it was a, it was a means of inviting people yeah. to things that were happening at the church, Christmas program, Easter concert program, whatever. And um, that's how two women came and ended up giving their lives to the Lord. But they had similar backgrounds, and this is just to tell you uh, a little bit of what is common. Both of these women uh, grew up in homes where they were told, you never should have been born, you weren't wanted. And in the one case, um, one woman re was abused in her home as a child. Uh, both tried to commit suicide, or at least thought about it. Um, and both went through uh, difficult separations. One never got married, but had three sons with a guy, and then opted to leave him and go into a very uh, bad situation with a lesbian relationship. And the other was a, a medical doctor, a cardiologist, smart. She had to fight for everything she got. Had a very difficult breakup with her husband tried to commit suicide and so forth. But what they found was a loving mm. family in the church. And um, things didn't, you know, they're, they're, they still have their struggles, but mm -hmm. they, they found love mm -hmm. and, and, and just knowing that they are wanted. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, they have value. So um, it's, it's really un, not, uncommon for the people and it may be that that's similar to here but uh, that they are uh, people are just um, in need of mm -hmm. a family mm -hmm. in need of a you know a God and it's hard for them to accept a God as Heavenly Father sometimes because mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have a good relationship with their own father 100% yeah we definitely definitely experience that here yeah. you know one of the things I've, I've talked to people too is and this is a question that comes in our mind is maybe you can help us with this is why do we need to go uh i know you know some of us are like man my neighbors don't know jesus or you know uh but why or why would they listen to us like here i am an american yeah. you know like yeah. um why would you in a sense like how would you encourage us as far as like this is why it's important or this is the uniqueness of cross-cultural ministry that just brings something that is a value. What would you say when you want to encourage people like, hey, um, pray and think about that calling of maybe it's not here. Maybe God's calling me to somewhere else. I'm going to pass the mic to Ray, but just one thing that comes to my mind is in France, there's a huge need for pastors. They don't have pastors. They're just, the church we left behind has no pastor. It's led by elders, which can work, but it's hard because they have their full-time jobs and they're trying to be the spiritual leaders. So there needs to be people that can give full-time attention to really discipling and, and, and Absolutely, you yeah. need that there. Okay. Why should we go? Yeah. If we understand who Jesus is and who God is, and we understand why Jesus came to earth and died, then we understand why we need to go. Uh, Jesus told us right before he went to heaven, now you go. You go to the places. Some of you don't need to go very far, just like right next door. Some of you need to go down the road a little ways. Some of you need to move out of California and go to Utah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my wife, we'll pray about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of you need to go to Russia or to Ukraine or to France. That's what Jesus said. I mean, he, he cloaked it in different terms, <laughs> but that's what he said. Yeah. And when, when we have an understanding of the love that God has for us, 
that he wants to save us from, do you talk about hell here? Yes, we say that I mean, word. not as a yeah. bad word, but yeah. as a place. We spell it out so we don't have to say the word. Hockey no, yeah. sticks. Hockey yes. sticks. Yeah, no, it's a real, it's, heaven's a real place, hell's a real place. We, it is. And we take Jesus literal in his words. And when we understand what eternal punishment is, we want to see the people that we know come to Jesus. But more than just the people that we know, we want to see the people that are around the world come to Jesus because just like Jesus died for my son, Jesus died for Philippe over in France or for Amadou in Abidjan, mm. West Africa. And when we have that right concept of Christ, his death, his resurrection, heaven and hell, then we'll have the right understanding of why we need to go next door or around the block or Utah or France. It reminds me of what Paul said, and we've talked about this, I think it was a few months ago, one of the sermons where we can only be a missional church where Paul says, I am compelled by the love of Jesus. So if I don't get it and I'm not compelled and he has an impact, I mean, his death and resurrection is more of a religious ceremonial, missions will always be like, eh, It'll be optional. It won't be, you know, it won't be a command of God. It'll be like, hey, if I feel like it. What that tells me is not so much that I don't get the mission of God. It's, I don't know if I have the love of God. Um, so Paul was compelled by love. And whether, again, it's reaching out to our neighbors or praying about saying, God, would you send me somewhere else? Or it's the young life thing. What, you know, we always promote young life. That's missions to the high school campuses where Jesus isn't talked about a lot. And also we bring in real love and light and people that love Jesus and it, it changes lives um, or whether it is overseas. You guys are so fortunate. You talk about young life and being able to go on high school campuses or college campuses. In France, we can't do that. It's against the law for us to go on any campus and talk about religion, talk about Jesus or anything else. Mm. So we have to have students who are in a relationship with Jesus talk to people on the campus about Jesus. So we had this kid that got baptized in our church and he invited his best friend to come to, to the baptism. And this kid had no idea about church whatsoever. He had never been in a church, never seen a Bible. I mean, wow. I, that's just, like, who's never seen a Bible? Yeah. And he had, we gave him one. He didn't even know what to do with it. And it just it just kind of blew us away. In our in the kids that that go to our church or any other church in France, we're just amazed that they can go through the French school system and come out the other side Christians, because the teaching is so strong, almost anti-Christ, anti-Christian, yeah, but absolutely uh, humanistic. Yeah, yeah, which. I know for some of us, we've seen our nation change in the way it does school and things like that. But again, you're looking at something that's even darker and harder. And I also want to encourage our church with this. This is why we stay focused. We, we don't get super political here. This is why. Because politics will not save anyone, even if you vote correctly in what you think is correct, right? Even if you, it, Jesus has to stay the center of everything because no matter how dark our culture gets, they need Christians to have the love of Jesus, not the anger of politics. That's our core belief there. And so this, this country, it could get darker, it could get light. We don't know how, but, but that Christians are needed in any situation, no matter however dark or however light it is. I just need you to know that's the heartbeat of here. And that's why we stay very focused on, let's not rip on other people all the time. Let's just focus on ourselves and making sure we love Jesus and that they see the love of Jesus in us. That's all we, we, we care about because our culture could get a lot darker where it gets harder and harder. And you parents, don't all of a sudden get isolationist and be like, oh, let's get away from all this. We need to train our kids in Christ and let them in public schools because their mission, that's a great missions field. So this layers into our church really, really, really well. And I love, you know, again, just the reality of what you guys saw and had to deal with because we're starting to deal with that more and more. I think in our in our culture here too. And we've we've left France at a time when things are getting more difficult. Uh, many of you have heard about the the uh, terrorist attacks that hit France about five years, six years yep. ago. Uh, 
uh, went into a theater and, and killed a bunch of people. Well, as a result of that, the French government has passed some laws to clamp down on fundamentalists. And in the beginning, it was like, we're going to stop the Muslims from, fundamentalistic Muslims from doing whatever they do. But in reality, it's to cover all religion. So there are now laws that have been passed on the books in France that cover all religion um, on what you can talk about in church, on what you can preach about, uh, what you can, can teach, um, how much money you can receive from someplace overseas. So if your church wanted to send X number of dollars that is controlled by the government now, or they'll tax you, or you have to report how much that is. Uh, part of the issues that we have now is that they're talking about hate speech. Um, so when I want to preach about what scripture talks about with um, one man, one, one wife. That could be considered hate speech, yeah. Hate speech. Um, because, you know, one man can have one wife and two or three concubines. Yeah. And if we talk about abortion, that can be hate speech. There's now a group that have been trained in France. They're called the religion police. And they go to church, mm -hmm. and they listen, and they observe. They can ask the church leaders to produce their bylaws and their financial statements, and they can be controlled by those police. Uh, one Sunday about well, early May or late April of this year, we had this guy come to church to visit, and I met him at the door, greeted him. He told me his name. I can't even remember. I'll just say Etienne, just because that sounds good in French, right? <laughs> and so I greeted him, and he sat down. He observed the whole church service, sat there the whole time, stood, and I couldn't tell whether he knew what we were doing or not. And then right before the church service ended, he got up and left and said, well, maybe I'll see you again sometime. One of the, one of the people in the church came and said to me, who was that guy? I said, well, that was Etienne. She said, do you know him? I said, never met him before in my life. And then she said, do you think he was one of the police that are, that are called in to control churches? What's that do to a church mm -hmm. when, you know, in the past, we warmly greet everybody and, and we're very open and friendly, like we're supposed to be, you know, right. love one another. And all of a sudden, now you're wondering, who is this mm -hmm. person that's coming to my church? What are they there for? Mm -hmm. And it's, if, if you're a leader in the church and you preach out of 1 Corinthians and you want to be true to the text, are you willing to say, this is right and this is wrong, knowing that it could mean that because of you, the church is closed, or you get thrown into jail for it. Yeah, that's what, the, that's what they're facing. You guys have uh, served God faithfully. I know there's a, a, a ton of stories. What's it like now, the next phase, as far as um, you're going to be living here close to family? Um, tell us just a little bit of what you're looking forward to as that chapter uh, uh, of ministry kind of closes. What are you looking forward to as far as the next few months, a few years? Uh, what's life going to be like? Well, first of all, we're the next few months. We're still traveling quite a bit. We are, we're going to New York in March, and then we're going to we'll be going up to Alaska and just here, there, and everywhere. And uh, so, the end of May is when we're pretty much done traveling, and then we have to figure out where we're gonna where we're gonna live. Our kids and grandkids are in Reading, up north, and um, so that's a logical place to go. Mm -hmm. But we need to find a house, so that would be a prayer request. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in a, a little mother-in-law apartment right now, and mm -hmm. the Lord provided that. That's great. It's really uh, hard for the father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> room for one, yeah. <laughs> one room, well, yeah, it's, it's um. small. But anyway, it's fine It's because we're not there all the time. Yeah. After that, uh, we, call, we talk about our encore. Mm -hmm. Not so much retirement, but, but our that. encore. Yeah. After, after the end of June, um, we're not sure what that's going to look like. Okay. You know, if the Lord, we're just kind of waiting on the Lord to open up doors. I mean, we're not going to be passive about it, but yeah. we'll do some searching and, and see what the Lord opens up for us. But as long as we're healthy and yeah. why not keep 
working, you keep know? Keep going, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ray, is there anything else as far as just, you know, here for the American church, our church specifically? Again, you have a different perspective that may just kind of parting words for us. Like, hey, just as someone that's really been experienced being faithful to God, uh, I know you've seen a lot of things, been through the ups and downs. Um, how would you just want to encourage or challenge us today? That's a good question. It's a good thought. The thing that, the, that Jesus told the disciples was this. They'll, they'll know you're my children for your love for one another. And that's one of the things that we really tried to instill in our church was that as believers in this church, we love each other. And that's one of the things that kept us together during the COVID season when things were shut down and we couldn't be together. It was our love for each other that brought us back together. And as we go through different phases here in, in our country, like mask, no mask, shot, no shot, mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, you know, all the junk that's around us, it's our love for each other that's going to keep the church solid and growing. And the love that Christ has for us, it comes into us and we pour it out to each other. And I really want to encourage you guys, as you look around one at your church here, that you develop that love, that you develop the, the relationships that are so terribly important because you're going to need them. You're going to need them. I agree, and I, I really appreciate you guys' wisdom. I appreciate um, your longevity, something for all of us to look up to, to aspire to, uh, your service to the Lord. Um, Romans 10, 14 through 15 says, this is what Paul says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard of? Billions of people have not heard of Jesus. They have zero concept. How can they believe in him? How can their lives be saved without someone preaching to them, Paul says? And how can they preach unless they're sent, they're trained, given money, supported, so they have the time and the skill to reach people for him? And he ends with this. This is how he wanted to encourage missionaries. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news? I know for us today, it's like feet, like why are feet built? Well, that would be esteemed. You would be, if you had nice feet, that means you had servants taking care of it. That means you were well off. What he's saying is you are well off in life. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about status. You are well off in life. You're esteemed if you bring good news to your neighbor, to people in Mexico, to people around the world. In God's eyes, you are beautiful, you are valuable, and you are blessed. And I hope our church, God views us that way. I really appreciate your guys' uh, time, your wisdom here. And uh, what I'd like to do is we're going to go into a time of just worshiping. I'd love for the Lord just to speak to you. Um, if you want, if you're inquisitive at all, you're like, I don't know if I'm called. I don't want to take that big of a step. Um, you can talk to me because we're partnered with the Alliance. Um, again, if you want to talk to Ray and Carol more, more feel free to talk to them. We have a pathway for you. If you want to take baby steps, we have little weekend things, week-long things, two-month things. We have all kinds of opportunities for you. And if it's not today, maybe it's the next few weeks. But we would love to be a church that sends people, supports people, prays for people, encourages people, and then you encourage us as you go and trust the Lord. And so we're going to spend some time. We're going to worship take communion. You can do it by yourself if you want just you and Jesus. If you want to do it with family or friends, maybe a group of you, uh, but just let the Lord speak to you. And so I'd love to just to pray for you guys. I know it's the next phase of, of life encore and uh, to see what God has for you. And then we're just going to jump into worship. Jesus, um, thank you for this time. Thank you for Ray and Carol and their obedience to you. And I know that there's a lot of um, there's incredible joy when we serve you, God, but there's a lot of scars and wounds. <laughs> there's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of things. It's like, ooh, that was a tough one. And, um, but God, their faithfulness overall, I know that they are blessed. 
and that you are so proud of them and that um, this is not just an encore now, but we have eternal life in you. And uh, they're going to be blessed not just in this life, but they're going to be blessed in the afterlife too. Um, and so, God, I pray that uh, you would just give them wisdom and clarity, what that looks like. God, I pray that you continue to give them influence. They wouldn't lose that. That as they view Encore, they're not, they're not disconnecting from the next generations, but they're just pouring out their heart and wisdom to encourage the next generation. So I pray you give them influence. And I pray you give them great time with their kids and grandkids. I pray that one of the greatest ministries would be being grandparents and that they would have a family that has multiple generations that follow you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. You guys, let's give my hand again. Thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. As we uh, go into worship now, um, about 100 years ago, you guys know of a boat that went down called the Titanic. Um, but I don't, you might have seen the movie. Uh, and it's, there's more than the movie there. There was a man who was a uh, Scottish uh, preacher. Um, he would come here to Moody Bible Institute, and he would preach. His name was John Harper. He had a six-year-old girl with him. And uh, what's interesting about the Titanic is there's great stories of heroism and then also of, um, I don't know what you, what you call it, but just people that were selfish and took care of themselves. And we have these documented stories because we have witnesses and what was great about John Harper is it says uh, that he was not only preaching on the boat as the boat was going over, but actually as the boat went down, he put his six-year-old on one of the boats, went back on, and was preaching to people. And as the boat was going down, uh, went into the water. One person that was floating, he encouraged them to reach out to Jesus um, again, the, didn't have time to explain the whole gospel, but just said, you need to cry out to the Lord. That person would be saved by a lifeboat and would tell the story of John Harper, and he died. But in his mind, he never, he didn't die. In his mind, even when a boat was going down, it was an opportunity because he knew he had life. And he wanted everyone, even if he couldn't fully explain the gospel, he wanted everyone to know God loves you. And he, I, I, I bet he couldn't imagine as he was doing that, there was a person floating on a piece of wood. They would get picked up. And the reason we heard about that story is because they would give their lives to God and they would serve God uh, the rest of their lives. Don't ever discount how God might use you. Hopefully it won't be on a boat like that. But here's, but here's the thing, you guys. Sometimes we just think of the random things we're doing. You might not know the fruit. And God might not call you to thousands of people, but he might call you to one, two, five, ten. He might call you to an area that's really fruitful, and he might call you to France where the ground's hard. If you're there for ten years and you get two Christians, you are super excited, right? But don't worry about the fruit. Follow the Savior. And all your fears will be taken care of, and all your worries will go away because he loves you, and he'll use you. So I pray that he speaks to you now. Jesus, we worship you because you are good. No matter how much we sacrifice here, God, you are good. And I pray that as a church, our greatest joy would not be just reading the Bible. Our greatest joy would be living out the Bible. Our greatest joy would not just be knowing that we're saved, but our greatest joy would be knowing that we can save others. May that be our heartbeat. And may you be proud of us in the way we let others know of the love of Jesus Christ and how that transforms the world more than any education, more than any politician. It's Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. In your name, we worship you.
so it's never gonna hold me. You're the only thing holding on to me. Death is never gonna hold you, so it's never gonna hold me. You're the only thing holding on to me. Yes, death is never gonna hold you, so it's never gonna hold me. You're the only thing holding on to me. Oh, death is never gonna. Beautiful name it is. Nothing can 
Now, nah, that's, that, that's how you clap at a golf tournament. Come on, come on, I know. Yeah. Nice putt, nice putt, Jesus, good job, yeah. Um, this is a good test for us because what I've noticed when it comes to like being outreach or missions, when I lack it, it's not because it's just a skill thing, it's because I lack conviction. And I lack conviction on two things, either my own relationship with Jesus, I don't really have one, well, of course I'm not going to go on missions. I don't even believe myself that I'm in a relationship with him. Or I lack conviction that Jesus really is going to come back. There's a heaven and a hell, and the stakes are high. I just don't believe that. In my heart, I'm like, nah, everyone will make it. That's the conviction piece. 
When that hits, the missions take care of itself. The calling, overcoming fear, it takes care of itself. When you realize your life has been saved, that's huge. We can never get past the gospel. You've been saved. When I was looking at stories of the Titanic, and that's how I, I kind of did some research, I'm like, oh, I came across, I didn't even know that story. But you know how we got all those stories? They're not made up. It's because someone was saved, and they could not help the rest of their lives telling about that person. And what a great illustration of who Jesus is. I can't stop telling the story. And if I don't get the money that I always want, the marriage that I always want, the friendships that I always want, the stuff that I always, if, that, if I never get that in life, and I have Jesus, that's what the Bible says, that's enough. Because you've been saved from death to life. I hope we never lose that as a church. Ray and Carol, thank you. So I know there's so much more. Your presence here is just enough for us. And I know you're going to go to a lot of other churches and bless them. And so just thank you. Uh, and we really just, yeah, just thank you so much. Again, uh, make sure you at least give them a high five, handshake, and a hug. Um, and then anything $20 or more, they'll take that for Encore too, you know. So uh, if you want to support missions, you do it two ways. As you give to the church, we give to the Alliance. So that's a natural way. Or you can go to the Alliance website and you can support missionaries. So you can go do that on a website if you want to uh, do that. Uh, and then um, other than that, enjoy your day-to-day. -day. If you want to come over and hang out some more, um, hit me or Christine up and we'll give you directions to the house and you can grab some food. But let us know. Don't just show up, okay? All right, you guys. Take care. Your chairs, grab them, put them on the rack for us. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks for joining us. For more resources, to get involved, or to invest in the ministries at Access Church, visit go to Take care.